Welcome to the Printer Prop Shop. I'm Michael. Today we've got the Rocketeer. I've been working on this for a little while now. I've been doing projects in between, um, making sure I went through the paces of letting things dry and things like that. Um, this was a great build. I, I loved this movie as a kid, and I'm glad I was able to bring it to life. I hope you enjoy it as well. Here's how I did it. Okay guys, so this is Armorsmith. Uh, I want to say right off the bat, Armorsmith didn't give me the program for free. I paid for it. Um, and they're not supporting my channel or giving me any money up front for this. Um, the program is, I want to say, about $30. I did link it below. Armorsmith is great for cosplayers. You can uh, put all of your measurements like I have on your avatar here and uh, measure it up to yourself and it should fit properly. I left a gap um, for foam so that it would fit a little bit snug on me um, and I put the nose right up to the right up to the edge so it would fit a little bit snugger on my head I just didn't want it to be a bobble head make sure that if you are using this to turn off um, scale all because it will just kind of make it all large and turn it into more of a bobble head so this is my slicer um, the program it's linked below as well I don't like printing all in one and on top of it this uh, helmet with the tail fin just wouldn't print out all in one on my printer anyway um, I don't like printing all in one because I've had so many failures in the past and it uses a lot of support material that I think is just kind of a waste when I can just put it all together anyway and I'm gonna do a lot of finished work at the end anyway so why bother printing it all in one just my thought here I've got my finished parts printed out um, the eyes did print out with this the uh, lens pieces if I might say not the eyes and uh, I just took my little Dremel tool and cut them out. Um, the little Dremel tool you can find at Amazon or any hardware store for like 25, 30 bucks. It's really handy. And I did cut out more of the inside shell so that those lenses would fit up close to the outside shell, if that makes sense, um, because I didn't want them sit and far, sitting too far back. And then after I got this at least mostly out, I took my little grinder tool um, and just grind it out down as far as best I could. I will say with a grinder tool, don't hold it in one spot, just keep moving um, as much as possible so it doesn't melt the plastic. And here I've got my wood burner. Wood burners you can pick up anywhere, Hobby Lobby, hardware, any, anything like that. And they're, they're very useful. This one I linked below. I found it on Amazon. It has a flat piece and it makes welding so much better. Before this, I did use construction adhesive to glue all the parts, and then I went back over the seams and welded them together. And you don't dig into the plastic, just hold it over so it melts the surface of the plastic and it'll hold it together just fine. You can see here the weld marks are um, fairly flat. There wasn't much sanding to do after that, just to, to knock off some of the burrs that maybe the plastic peeled up a little bit. I do have that little ridge right there where the print didn't print out so well, um, and I'll fix that um, upcoming here. Now the front, when I printed off those two front pieces, they were facing the top of the printer, and that was how they just printed off. That was the finishing part. Even though I have ironing on, it just didn't come out very well. So I just took my, my wood burner and smoothed it out as best I could, getting it down to uh, a a more pliable surface and those little rivet marks around the lenses too I ended up sanding those off and making my own you'll see later on in the video here but they just they didn't print out very well and then after sanding they just wouldn't have looked very well um, they wouldn't have carried the look and you can see I smoothed it out it really came out really good and here I've got my tub of plastic wood and when you're doing this at least when I do it I just cover the whole unit. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, you're, you're going to sand it down anyway, and then on top of that, with a round surface in those seams, I'm actually, when I start sanding, I actually kind of mold it myself. So I just keep it going on a curved surface. And applying it is really easy, and it dries in like at least half an hour. It's, it dries really quick. 
and it won't dry pink on it if that matters to you it'll actually dry white you'll see in the uh, in the next part where I'm sanding that it, it actually dries to a kind of a white consistency and it's water washable and here I'm, I'm sanding I've got one of these little uh, sanding sponges they're they're pretty handy when you're doing um, filler when you're sanding filler especially on a curved surface because it does curve with the surface so like I said I'm, I'm actually molding this and that's what I use filler more for is to kind of mold with it and keep those surfaces round so here I've gone ahead and uh, touched up that little spot I'm, I'm guessing because I printed on a cold day and I had opened up the door to the shop probably let that cold air in and the print lifted but you make do with what you got I wasn't gonna reprint the whole the whole piece and waste that much uh, PLA and this tube of uh, wood filler I like using for touch-ups I touched up all over the place it didn't need a whole lot so it worked out great here I threw on about two or three coats of uh, filler primer I was cautious because there are weld marks uh, when I was sanding so I didn't want to fill those in I still wanted them to show through and uh, I find wet sanding therapeutics some 600 grit sandpaper with some water and uh, kick on the TV and just sand away for a couple hours now here I have thrown on an enamel base coat of gold the same one I used uh, as a base coat on the Queen and I'm doing my outlines there I did go over it with a different gold an airbrush gold by Tamaya um, made it a little less extreme, but I did my outlines here So here guys learn from my mistakes wait until you're completely done before you put in the lenses um, Not that it's a, a killer, but it uh, it'll make your life a little bit easier This is a welders replacement lens. You can find them on Amazon for about $25 um, And I used a dry erase marker dry erase markers are great because you just wipe them off. I outlined it to the size I needed I put L and R on them to uh, distinguish which side it went into in case I got mixed up and uh, they cut with scissors and uh, if you take a heat gun to them they'll they'll form really easy to the inside surface of whatever you need but again wait until your very last step when you've finished all of your painting completely before you put these in or even try to do them And then here I pulled out my heat gun. Um, what I'm doing is forming them to the inside surface. The nice thing is if you're using a heat gun in these kind of lenses, um, no matter what your inside surface is, when you heat it up and kind of press it in, um, it'll form to that. And it's even better if the inside surface isn't completely smooth because then you have a surface to line up if they should ever happen to fall out on you and you need to put them back in. I will say use some gloves with your heat gun and when you're doing this like I am um, just because it does get very hot and uh, it is melted plastic so it could it could potentially burn you and then here I've got just an ordinary glue gun you can pick these up at Walmart for five ten bucks um, and the glue is relatively cheap I am uh, putting it in from the outside in so that when I push that lens in there it'll uh, it'll just touch better and then here I've got my foam. This foam is meant for seats, for like patio furniture, but you can find it at Walmart, a two inch foam for maybe 10 bucks. Um, I cut off strips and then I cut those strips in half and um, lay them on the inside. So now I've got an inch strip on the inside. And quite honestly, I don't really care how it looks on the inside. Um, some people will want those airsoft cushions which they're really great, but they do cost a little bit more. Whereas you can pick this up relatively cheap and just cut it. And then I just hot glue them in place. Really just that simple. So on to those rivets. I wanted them to look better than what they printed out. So I figured I would print them out in resin. And I went into Fusion 360 and uh, I knew I wanted them about five to seven millimeters. I ended up going with seven millimeters. 
and um, just design them. I, I think it maybe took me all of 20 minutes to design them and then uh, exported them to an STL and got them on my desktop and took that STL and put it into uh, my my resin printer um, program called Chitu Box. You'll see right here. And I ended up printing out um, 16 of them. I knew I needed eight, but with printing, sometimes you get some failures in there. So, and in case they were pretty small, so in case I dropped one, I was good to go. And then here, as you can see, I masked up those uh, lenses with some just some ordinary masking tape, and I've put on my rivets there, and I'm doing my shading, as I typically do, and then uh, ended up going back over it with some of that Tamiya Greedy Gold just to cover it back up and I did do a couple of other little little lines since I had um, my black paint out just to kind of shade things off and uh, just kind of give it a little distinct look to it I figured why not I've got the paint out hey and that's how I did it guys it's not the easiest to do but it's not the most difficult to do you'll find that you'll overcome the obstacles you'll learn how to how to how to fix things and always remember it's plastic so you can always fix it you can always print out another part you can always sand it down you can always fill in it's it's not the end of the world if something goes wrong this helmet especially was uh was a childhood favorite of mine i saw the rocketeer as a kid with my dad and it brought back great memories of seeing that movie just building this and seeing it come to life and it's just been a pleasure building it. I hope you enjoyed the build as well. And in FYI, it does fit since I did mold it to my, my own head in Armorsmith. And I have to say, it's, it's not that noticeable, right? Like, you could wear this anywhere. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching. This has been Michael on the Printed Prop Shop, and I hope you have a great day.